the most important position in the NFL is quarterback. Nobody disagrees with that. And that's why bad teams are always on the search for a franchise QB at the NFL draft. But the reality is, talent doesn't matter when it comes to drafting a quarterback. At least most of the time. Developing a quarterback comes from situation, not talent. Statistically, half of the quarterbacks taken in the first round of drafts don't pan out. It's the lowest hit rate of any position, and there's a lot of reason for that. Judging a QB on film is hard, because colleges run very different schemes and spread systems that don't necessarily carry over to the pros. So no, even though Marcus Mariota put up ridiculous numbers at Oregon, it didn't ever mean he was actually going to work out for the Titans. In a vacuum, even looking at last season, quarterbacks have more success in better situations, obviously. Trevor Lawrence went first overall, and he was supposed to be some stud. Instead, the Jaguars went 1-15, blew chunks, and had to deal with Urban Meyer. That's like the absolute worst case scenario for a youngest poster child for situational success is Patrick Mahomes. Yes, he's extremely talented, and he was able to turn into everything the Chiefs had ever hoped for. But why? Because of his situation. Not only did he get to learn from Andy Reid, but he didn't have to play his rookie year because he got to sit behind Alex Smith. And the Chiefs were damn good. They literally won 12 games without Mahomes. Mahomes had the talent, but he needed the right situation to be put together. And in that same draft in 2017 was Deshaun Watson. I mean, come on. Deshaun Watson came into the league and dominated faster than he can finish at a massage parlor. He was a beast as a rookie, but it was on a Texans team that had won their division for two straight seasons. He didn't just walk in and turn things around. Josh Allen is considered the big Bills savior. But literally the season before Allen got to Buffalo, the Bills made the playoffs with Tyrod Taylor at QB. They already had the roster, they had the head coach and Sean McDermott, they just needed the quarterback, and Allen was able to be put in the position to succeed. That same draft in 2018, the Ravens took Lamar Jackson. He got to briefly sit behind veteran and Super Bowl champ Joe Flacco, and the year before, Baltimore had a winning record. Jackson had the tools around him to succeed, not to mention John Harbaugh. 2016 might actually be the best example of this. Tony Romo was a stable QB, but got hurt, and Dak Prescott got to step in for him on arguably the best team in the NFL roster-wise, definitely the best offensive line in the league. He was good as a rookie, and he's made a career for himself. 2020, Andrew Luck, who was able to succeed on a team that made the playoffs a year prior behind Peyton Manning, but more importantly from that draft, the third round pick, Russell Wilson, succeeded after going to a team with one of the greatest defenses in NFL history and a good head coach in Pete. Carroll. And just taking a quick glance at literally the back-to-back -back MVP and arguably likely the best player in football, Aaron Rodgers. Well, he got to sit behind Brett Favre for three years before he ever had to start. So what about quarterbacks that weren't put in a good situation? Well, it's hard because you don't want to judge a QB too early. So let's only look at guys who have played out their entire rookie deal. Now, the top two guys in the 2018 draft are competing for a job against each other this summer on a team they weren't even drafted by, Baker Mayfield and Sam. Darnold. Both went to two of the most dysfunctional organizations over the past two decades, the Browns and the Jets. The Browns situation is kind of an odd one, but the Jets certainly didn't set up Darnold to succeed on a bad team headed by a lame duck coach, Todd Bowles, and later was led by the GOAT himself, Adam Gase. Later that draft, Josh Rosen went to the Cardinals, who essentially hired Steve Wilkes just to fire him one year later, had a horrendous offensive line, and were basically in a ridiculous bad spot because Bruce Arians just retired out of nowhere. I mean, that was just a bad situation all around. The year before, Mitch Trubisky went to a bad Bears team that had managed to lose every single road game the season prior, and had a head coach in John Fox, who was clearly about to get fired. Now, it's not a secret that the Browns are just a completely incompetent ridiculously run organization that can't do anything right, and quarterback careers go there to die. Tim Couch going first overall in 1999 was screwed from the jump, but we all know that the Browns have done a terrific job ruining careers, and just absolutely making horrific draft day decisions. Quinn Brady in 2007, well, he was just screwed. Brandon Whedon in 2012, he never stood a chance, but then again, why the hell did the Browns draft a 28-year-old in the first round? I don't really know, but that seems like something so stupid, only Cleveland would do it. It could be worse, though. At least we're not Detroit. We're, we're not, not Detroit. Detroit. Johnny Manziel didn't pan out after going in the first round in 2014, but maybe if he stayed off the coke, he could've. But the Browns knew that he was a party animal. That's on them again. 
Basically, the Browns are the best at ruining careers, but as a Washington fan, I feel like we're pretty good too. But that being said, there are outliers. Joe Burrow is a big one that does stand out, but I do think the Bengals deserve a lot of credit for being able to build around him, specifically building the best wide receiver core in the NFL, maybe other than the Rams. Cincinnati was one of those teams like Washington or Cleveland, though, where it just felt impossible for them to actually be able to competently groom a quarterback. But obviously, Burrow's turned out pretty good. One of those other teams is the Chargers, who five picks later after Burrow took Justin Herbert, and he's turned into one of the best quarterbacks in the league. His first season was good, too, despite his offensive line being absolute shit, but last year Herbert's line was solid and he's had Keenan Allen and Mike Williams on the outside since the moment he landed in LA. Plus, if you're a bad team, you may already be planning on firing your coach or they're just on a short leash. There's plenty of other issues. It makes it a lot harder for a young guy to develop, especially at quarterback where the players around him are so important. So what does a team actually need to do to develop a good quarterback? Ideally, have a veteran or even a starter already on that team at the position that can help the young guy develop. Add to that a decent offensive line that isn't going to absolutely get your quarterback killed and receivers that can at least take some of the load off of him and head coach that's going to stick around. But then again, if you have those things, well, you probably don't have a high enough pick to take a top quarterback. So is it even worth taking a quarterback high at the draft if you're a completely dysfunctional organization? I don't know. How good Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen are, and I'd consider those pretty much the two best young quarterbacks in the NFL, I guarantee you right now, as a Washington fan, that if we would have drafted them, they would have sucked. Because at the end of the day, everything comes down to situation, not talent.